Hi, if you have problem with general servicing and you're so upset that you keep changing from one operator to another and it just doesn't seem to fix your problem, your aircon is always very smelly, it drips water, it doesn't cool down properly, then you need to know what is the root problem. Failure to address at the root level simply results in solutions that doesn't seem to work. First of all, we have to understand that the worst enemy of aircon is never dust and a lot of people get it wrong. In fact, the worst enemy of aircon are the living organisms like bacteria and mold. So the thing that clogs your aircon is this slimy, transparent or translucent stuff, the aircon man calls it jelly, but actually it's biofilm and it's the same stuff that when you have a cough or you have phlegm, that's biofilm, bacteria. And um, the other thing is the thing that clogs the air blower on the fan. It's a mixture of dust, yes you're right, it's dust, but a lot of it is actually mold. So if we fail to recognize that these are the living organism, then you find that we will never be able to totally eradicate the problem or solutions that is not thorough enough simply results in the bacteria and the mold growing back again and again. So we have to get to the, uh, the basics. First of all, we have to understand the limitation of warm water aircon. The, having understood that the problems are mold and bacteria, it becomes clear that we have to control protein and oil in the air because these are the stuff that fits the bacteria and fits the mold. So in the absence of oil and, uh, oil and protein, then you find that the mold and uh, bacterial growth is uh, limited. So that's why it's common to see such problems in families that cook every day because there's a lot of protein in the air. But of course, it really depends on the architecture of the house. If the wind direction is favorable to you, where the wind is blowing out of the uh, kitchen window, then you find that the protein and the oil gets uh, removed from the apartment. But nevertheless, if the wind is blowing from kitchen in, then it ends up pushing the protein and oil into the apartment. And if your room always smells of food after uh, cooking, then uh, you know that actually the protein and the nutrients are in the air. So that's number one. And um, if you want to filter out the protein and the oil in the air, basically you need very thick filters, fiber filters, or maybe very tight filters, they call HEPA filters. The problem is that if you have such thick, good filtration, then uh, you're looking at a fan motor that is really big. Um, probably may weigh like 5 kg, 3 kg, and um, consumes about 250 watts an hour. Really huge, gigantic motors. To overcome the kind of drag needed for good filtration. And these are systems um, that is also very noisy because that airflow that overcomes this filtration is going to be really loud. It goes So these are systems that people put above the ceiling board where you can't hear and uh, commonly known as the industrial aircon. So for warm water aircon, it becomes not suitable because of the weight, the energy bill and the noise associated. So warm water aircons are built very differently. So they use a fan motor that's so tiny. In fact, uh, it's a very well engineered motor. Inside the motor, if you break it apart, you will even see PCB box embedded inside the fan motor. Such motors consume so little electricity. On an average run, it consumes about 10 to 15 watts of electricity as compared to 250 watts. And this 10 to 15 watts in comparison is probably less than your fluorescent tube 
that is 40 watts, 20 watts. So, in, con in, in general, means that it consumes less energy to run that fan motor than to run an electric light bulb. So, it's a highly energy efficient fan motor, very quiet, it spins very fast, but it don't have the suction power. So, the trade-off is that the filtration has got to go. So it's no wonder that the the filters of the aircon is just a net with very big pores in fact. So it's only capable of filtering out the big dust particle. Even the smaller ones get through the system. So that is the severe limitation of warm mounted aircon. So that's why if your family cooks, then you find that when the air has got too much of the oil particles, or for example, if you are burning essential oil, you wear perfume or you have this uh, diffuser, perfume diffuser in the room, all this will contribute to oil particle which is which is invisible to your naked eye. You can't see but it's in the air and you can't filter it out. So these things enter the aircon, sticks on the surface of the fan coil heat exchanger, the internal parts of the aircon on the water tray and that's where the bacteria and mold will begin to colonize because this is what they are supposed to do in nature to break down organic stuff so we have to establish the root of the aircon problem so knowing that warm water aircon comes with a severe limitation where you can't take out this stuff the, uh, the, the best way is that since you can't filter them out you have to let them go so you have to make sure that you have nice cross ventilation open your windows, open your door, open your, your, your room doors, open your main gate door so that the wind flows nicely through and carry the uh, high protein, uh, high density air out of the apartment. So, but a lot of problems are uh, facing the, uh, this generation for, for reasons like uh, both couples are working and in the day nobody is at home so you can't afford to open the windows in case if it rains water gets inside the apartment and the other problem is that the modern flats and condominiums are built very differently so your door is facing your neighbor's door and the the, the shape of the room is is not like the hdb flat that in the uh, our parents day which is just one long rectangular block when you open your front door you see your kitchen door where air pass through the apartment very nicely so cross ventilation has always been a problem for the uh, new building architecture but nevertheless you should actually try to open up not just the windows you have to open up your door including your front door if you want to have nice cross ventilation failure to do so it means that there is always this high density air in the room that will get inside the aircon and starts producing mold and bacteria so and it also becomes clear that when your aircon is brand new within the first one to two years you are pretty trouble free and depends on the level of cross ventilation of course and the uh, amount of protein in the air so some people get into pro uh, problem as soon as three to six months and these are families that cook very extensively, very oily cooking with no ventilation. And uh, so when we talk about opening the windows, you have to also know, are you using curtains? If you are using curtain, then the curtain is in the way. So you open your window and it blocks the uh, airflow. So you don't have a nice cross breeze. So, and uh, but on an average family, it's about uh, we expect to see some mold and bacterial growth in roughly about one year's time if you use the aircon every day. So once the bacteria and mold colony uh, begins to grow, you have to make sure that the cleaning is thorough enough that it totally disinfect and get this thing out of the system. But if you just do a general servicing where you use a brush to vacuum them, then you find that it's only superficial. As a result, this thing will grow. They will begin to multiply within a very short time. The trouble is that if you were to use such a method where you attach a brush tip and begin to vacuum, 
then the brush tip becomes bacteria mold infested then you take that same brush tip you go to another aircon that you hardly use and if it's hardly used then it needs no cleaning don't get it wrong and now with this bacteria mold infested brush tip you begin to vacuum on the aircon which is which is clean which is okay and now you cross contaminate the other aircon now is bacteria mold infested and no wonder the other aircon after servicing begins to smell so don't do general servicing but rather those aircon that you use frequently you should be doing a thorough disinfection at least once in a year I hope this clarifies the uh, issue of why your aircon is always having some problem. Thank you.